inches away from each car we pass. It's very terrifying. Apparently, this is the entrance to our hotel. There are lots of guys with guns around. Eight hours on a flight, and we're in a totally different world. We have a steel gate. Whenever there are rallies or riots, we close these gates. Only one vehicle is allowed through the dog sniffing, then the under vehicle inspection system. These are the barriers that, which are filled with the sandbags. They can withstand any blast. This is the uh, luggage scanning room. The guest passes through here, then the guest goes through again through the walkthrough gate. And then they're in heaven. Yeah, then they are in heaven. <laughs> Welcome to Pearl Continental Hotel Scotty Department. It gives me immense pleasure to introduce you to my organization. I have uh, four gates, four watchtowers. Everything is recorded 24-7. That's all. <laughs> Do you have any questions? Yeah. Do you like fashion? Uh, yes, why not? <laughs> <laughs> the Karachi Pearl Continental Hotel. The fashion week is happening in the hotel and there are eight restaurants, so there's really no reason to leave. Our security advisor mentioned that it would be a good idea for us to be on the fourth floor of the building, just in case there was some circumstance in which we needed to jump out of our windows. We are now on the ninth floor <laughs> and I have no clue what I'm supposed to wear to Karachi Fashion Week. I'm trying to be as respectful as possible. So I can't tell if this is like something that's long enough. I mean, obviously the arms are not covered, so that's not good. This has a giant hole in the middle, so that's out. I guess black is always safe. It's frustrating to have to think about things like this and not wanting to upset people and make people feel comfortable and be respectful of their culture. But at the same time, I'm me. I'm never not gonna be me. I can still think really f***ed up things if I'm wearing something really conservative. I might be wearing a burqa, but I still masturbate. <laughs> Fashion Week in Karachi is fairly new. It started in 2009. What happens when the red carpet doesn't really roll? <laughs> Walking around, it was easy to forget that this fashion week was taking place in what was essentially a guarded bunker in the middle of one of the most volatile countries in the world. Considering showtime's in a couple hours, they've got a lot of work to do here. Although the chandeliers are up, so it's a good sign. In one year alone, 3,000 people were killed in Karachi through terrorism and religious clashes. Fashion weeks in the past have also been targeted, but the hotel security were taking all of the necessary precautions. I mean, this is massive. This is bigger than many of the fashion shows I've been to in New York. This room would soon be transformed by the arrival of hundreds of local fashionistas and designers. Oh, this is exciting. Here's a bar. <laughs> it will undoubtedly serve fruit juice. Alcohol has been strictly forbidden nationwide for almost 40 years. Anyone caught drinking by the religious police faces severe punishment under Islamic law. To find out how things are done here, we headed upstairs to meet Omar Jamil, a publicist for the Fashion Week and a notorious man about town. Hey. Hello. Hi, guys. <laughs> you guys want a drink? Drink, drink, drink. They bring glasses. A Anyone real drink? drink? You'll have a drink. A real drink? Oh my god, yes! Ashu, there are three girls from art, two very beautiful girls. I'll translate that afterwards, huh? So are you, guys having, you guys actually having a drink? God, I really feel on the spot. Okay, but, so, but how does it work? Like what, the, the alcohol? Yeah. Uh, bootleggers. Wow. Yeah. Uh, if you're Christian or Hindu or whatever, you can buy alcohol. So, oh. you know, you can legally buy it. So what a lot of bootleggers do is they actually Hindus or Christians or whatever. Bootleg is always more expensive. A bottle of Black Label whiskey costs about 8,000 rupees, which is about 60 pounds. So it sounds like buying weed. It's a lot like buying weed, yeah. In or drugs, yeah. It's a lot like that. It's a lot easier to actually find hashish over here than it is to buy alcohol. Really Interesting. Right. Yeah. So it's not like, it's not like, it's a, is it illegal? Alcohol? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I have no idea what the official punishment is, but it's not its not oh, going to be anything nice. It's going to be something like being flogged or something. It's 80 lashes. There you go, 80 lashes. Yeah. yeah. But, like, but I don't know anybody 
anybody who's been lashed for drinking alcohol, ever. So when you grow up here in the Pakistani elite, you grow up drinking. When I was a kid, you could get busted for drinking. You'd have the cops sort of standing around places where you had parties. They'd be like, dude, you've been drinking. And you'd be like, no, nah, man, I've not been drinking. And they're like, dude, I can smell the alcohol. You'd be like, no. Nah. And then they're like, all right, fine, you know, take care of us also. And you slip them like 2,000 rupees or whatever is in your pocket. Normally that works. I get kind of pissed off and a lot of people pull the, don't you know who I am? That doesn't always work. I know someone really backfired on. Once he got thrown into jail, actually. It was really funny. But I think in many ways, uh, Pakistan's more restrictive now than it was. I think a lot of that's because of safety and the, the, the other things, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Boss, I had a glass of water. I had a This feels really Two nice. photographer passes, okay? What's the most important thing you would want me to get out of this? I think is two things. Number one is actually the fashion. We do have like really, really talented designers and really, really talented artisans and crafts over here in this country. And I don't think people abroad see enough of that or get to hear enough of that. And the counterpoint to that, which also fits within the larger picture, is the fact that there's a lot more to Pakistan than you see in the mainstream media. Absolutely. A lot. Actually, you know, it's, it's crazy that I work in PR because I don't really like meeting people. I'm not very sociable. What are you talking about? That is such a lie. No, I'm really not. That is an outrageous I'm lie. Really You're not. literally the most no, sociable person I've really ever met. I'm just really charming. <laughs> I'm gonna suck up to you guys. It's kind of my job. But you don't suck up to me. No, it's because you're beautiful. If oh. I do, it's because you're beautiful. It's not because it's my job. The rest of these guys, no. But I'm smart. Are you really? Is that what you want people to know you for, really? Hey, hey man. What's up? Oh, let's see. This dude. This is the man. Hi. Hi, the man. Hi. I'm Haley. Awesome. This is the man. Nice to meet you. He is, uh, he's gonna be showing on day three. And I'm directing. He's also directing the show. And he's... Look at those teeth. Ah, uh, you like them? <laughs> Haley, give me one second. I'm gonna meet a couple of people. Over there, I'm gonna introduce you to Mahin Kareem. Mahin, Haley, Haley, Mahin. Hi. Hi. Fashion journalist extraordinaire. Nice to meet you. Artika, Artika, Hi. Hi. Hey, nice to meet you. Uh, let me... Uh, Haley. Oh my god. I'm just seeing a bar and we're serving hideous blue drinks. Should we go try one? What's in these drinks? I don't know but they taste like pure sugar. You guys found that nice non-alcoholic bar we have. <laughs> tastes like a melted Jolly Rancher. It's really good. Sometimes people only go to fashion shows to drink free champagne. That's certainly not happening here. Let's hit the red carpet. All right. Looking around backstage, the majority of Pakistani fashion was more about covering up than flashing skin. But there were some exceptions. So apparently, there are models in bondage gear backstage, which sounds very risque. It's sort of silly being here now because two days ago when I was on my way here, I was really nervous about coming. And now I feel like I'm at a trade show in Vegas. <laughs> They're playing the Pakistani national anthem, which I've never heard of on a fashion show before. Thank you. Before arriving here, the kind of Pakistani fashion I was most familiar with was traditional or religious dress. But on the runway, I could see two opposing currents at work, the conservative and the more unexpected. They seemed to stem from conflicting ideas, and I wanted to find out the root cause. For more than a decade, Pakistan has been shaken by ongoing terrorist violence and rising extremism. 
Today, traditional values and a more progressive Western vision are competing for the hearts and minds of the Pakistani public. But it wasn't always this way. I wanted the perspective of someone who remembers what it was like in the less troubled times of the 1960s. So I met with Nusi Jamil, the grand dame of Pakistani fashion. What do you wear under this? Nothing, I mean, hopefully. <laughs> um, this is the first picture I gave Gilo, my husband. Wow, you look like a Shirelle. Could you talk to me about the way that you've seen fashion shift over the course of your lifetime here? So fashion is something which was very influenced by the West um, as I was growing up. Uh, as was music, by the way. So, you know, one heard the music of the 60s, Joan Baez, later when the Beatles came. And I think the really dramatic and significant changes began to happen when we had a dictator, General Zia ul Haq, mm -hmm. um, as president of this country. And he made changes that were so dramatic and so um, significant because they impact our daily lives even today. In 1978, General Zia al Haq overthrew the democratically elected President Bhutto. He went on to declare Pakistan an Islamic state and imposed Sharia law. His interpretation of Islam favored Sunni Muslims over Shia and led to a rise in the sectarianism we see today. It's the fear of violence, I think, that when you know that somebody can blow themselves up and your children or you may be impacted, Obviously, people get threatened and scared, and I think it's the fear that keeps people locked up in their homes. Have you lost hope? I'm still a little bit like Alice, lost and still wondering what happened. The dominant look at Fashion Week was relatively modest, featuring traditional fabrics and embroidery. So when the model stepped out in bondage gear, it certainly roused my interest. I wanted to meet with the team responsible for this risky collection. Hi! Hey, how are you? I'm well. I'm Hi. Haley. Hi, this is Minahil. This is Hassan. Hi, this Hassan. Do you guys live here? We live here. We work, work here. here 24 7. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. I never sort of imagined a bondage collection on the runway in Pakistan. That's a people. great <laughs> compliment. Yeah. Do you have any backlash? Are people upset by this work? Yeah, definitely. Everybody actually asks us that, are these pieces wearable? Why are you guys making these pieces? And we want to prove Pakistani people that something that a big designer of Pakistan who are afraid of doing, these two young people can do it for the country. Yeah. So how did you get into making bondage clothing. It's about unzip me, what's inside unzip me. Unzip me. Yeah. Okay. And as you unzip me, be strong and hope. And then how, you know, one person's life is all destroyed shattered. and how shattered and scattered and how he reconnects himself. Can I try this on? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sure. So my mouth is available. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But do you understand that like, we have a certain connotation with this kind of clothing. Like, for yeah. us, it's about a kind of sex culture. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And what you're saying is completely different. Yeah. You know, when you talk about bondage and you wear this stuff, you feel like you're imprisoned. But at the same time, you're intact. Are you guys into s and uh, Not much. No. <laughs> not much, not much. We are not focusing on bondage or something to do with fetish stuff. Right. It's not that. To get a better idea of what most people in Pakistan are actually wearing every day, Mo took me to the market where she showed me how to make Pakistan's most popular outfit, the salwar kameez. Are girls competitive about how their salwar kameez look? Oh yes, there's a lot of competition everywhere. Do you have any secret spots? <laughs> well, there are many, but I would not like to disclose them <laughs> here. <laughs> the salvar kameez is worn across South Asia and will always be based on a long tunic worn over loose trousers. We have different kinds of fabrics here mm -hmm. available, different kinds of silks, chiffons, and we buy this stuff and we get it dyed, we get it uh, embroidery on it, and then we finally make a garment out of it. And this fancy fabric, this is Indian fabric, it's called uh, jamawar. What just happened? The light went off. So the power went off? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Does that happen a lot here? Yeah, a lot of time. Every other hour, actually. These are all dyers here. Wow, that's a beautiful color. They can dye any color you want. This is the shade card. Oh, cool. How long have you been doing this? 14 years. What's your favorite color to make? Dark blue. 
Eve's Klein Blue. Yeah. Sky Blue with the sun. Oh, Sky Blue, I like Sorry. this. Sorry. <laughs> right. And what is he doing now? He's drying it up so that we can see the original color. That's so beautiful. We sometimes put them on our necklines. Sometimes we put them on the slits. What about on my head? <laughs> oh, it looks okay. lovely. <laughs> Being traditional is something everybody likes here. I've noticed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The textile industry is vital to Pakistan. It's the world's fourth largest producer of cotton, employing 15 million people. Exports of textiles contributed $9 billion to the economy last year alone. But severe shortages in gas and electricity are holding up efforts to develop the country. I'm coming to meet with Hassan Beg to find out about the government's policy and plan for the future of the textile industry. How healthy is the textile industry now? We are suffering some problems, especially the energy issue. Mm -hmm. The energy crisis actually has crippled everything. What caused the energy crisis here in Pakistan? The population is increasing, mm -hmm. and the industry is increasing, and the energy need is increasing, and our resources uh, were limited, and we were tackling more issue of the I mean, uh, security issues and the terrorism, and so we could not invest really in that way. Uh, like the power the, just went the out. Power is, yeah. <laughs> in spite of the country's energy crisis, Pakistan does produce one product that is renowned the world over for its high quality, denim. In the last 15 years, Pakistan has become one of the most successful exporters in the world. We headed to a clothes market to see if Pakistani denim is as popular here as it is worldwide. But we saw a guy at the airport wearing this really intense shirt that said, I hate you all. I imagine he purchased it somewhere like this. Does it matter that these clothes are secondhand? Do people come here to find these styles particularly, or do they shop here because it's just cheaper? Style is, is everything. Are you a Snoop Dogg fan? Yes, of course. <laughs> these brands may have a global reputation, but their production started a lot closer to home. What kind of jeans are these? Made in Pakistan? Made in Pakistan. G-Star? Yeah, made, made in, in Pakistan. Pakistan. Where do you get these? All jeans are made in Pakistan and export to other countries. OK. And after using other countries, it will come back. And uh, after that, I will use. Only low quality of uh, jeans are available in Pakistan. Why is that? Too expensive. These jeans are made down the street, and you have to wait till they're shipped to America, have somebody else wear them, and then come back here to wear jeans that are made in your own country. Yes. That's crazy. I love Pakistan, and I love Pakistani material. Because Pakistani denim is the best. Yeah, but best. Not better, but best. All right. Thank you so much. Welcome, most welcome. This is crazy. After getting a taste of the world outside the Fashion Week bubble, we returned for another night. I still couldn't work out the contradiction between the bold designs and the more traditional looks. I found two women from the audience who I hoped would cast light on how they're able to engage with fashion within a religious society. When you feel the most feminine, what are you wearing? Honestly, the hijab. It gives me so much more respect. It makes me feel like a woman. And if you get caught by the cops, yeah, if you're dressed like this, they let you go. And it yes. frames your face. Yes, yeah. I never have a bad hair day. Yeah, I have a bad hijab day, but not a bad hair day. Can you explain how you reconcile your love of fashion and your religion? Nowhere in Islam does it say that you cannot enjoy fashion. I'm covered but I'm wearing my pants, I'm wearing a nice shirt, yeah. Do you ever find it limiting? Do you ever find yourself wanting to wear something crazy? We can wear anything crazy as long as it's in the confines of our home, in front of people that are our mehram. Mehram is a term used for the men who we are allowed to show our skin to, yeah. <laughs> I need a mehram. <laughs> you need a mehram, yeah. To some Pakistanis, the slashed skirts, plunging necklines, and crop tops were pushing boundaries and revealing too much of a woman's body in public. I wanted to learn how models reconcile the clothes they wear on the runway with the culture beyond the fashion industry. So we met up with two models who had moved back to Pakistan after working abroad. 
And are there girls that have had a more religious upbringing that have difficulty with the clothes they have to wear or? It's changing. And the parents who used to think like that, can no, don't wear that, don't wear this, they're also changing their mind now slowly, slowly, because every time everything has changed. But I have a little bit of a different take on that. Okay. I feel like, um, you know, every country has its own culture. And I don't think we should be forced to follow any other culture. Sometimes as models, we do try to speak up when it comes to that. But if you speak up too much, like yesterday, I was taken out of a show. No. Because I said that, listen, you know, guys, uh, you know, I, I do come from a liberal family. But at the same time, if I don't have to, then is there another option? And as, as soon as I brought up my concern, he took me out of the show. I would actually prefer not to wear any kind of revealing clothes at all. We are definitely one culture who can show that we don't really need to reveal too much of our skin to look beautiful because it's been part of our culture. We know how to do it. The fashion scene in Pakistan was clearly pushing boundaries, but I wondered if this culture of tolerance extended to other areas. Sex is rampant in Pakistan. And why not? Why not? And why not? We caught up with a journalist known as the most hated man in Pakistan to ask him about it. So, I heard you're the most hated bitch in Pakistan. <laughs> kind of. In fact, why kind of? Yes, I am, because I have a voice, a big voice. I can give it to you. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, in the West, the gay culture and fashion is immense. Is that a case here? We think we should celebrate diversity and difference. And there's so much sex in Pakistan. I cannot tell you, you go to rural areas, it's very fluid. Really? It's, men have boyfriends and best friends. We are showing what we are on these ramps. It's completely shocking for many people and they are out to suppress us and we are pushing boundaries in a conservative culture. That's our way to fight back. You see, the more people do fashion, the more those forces are defeated. After watching their runway show, Pakistani designer Gul Ahmed offered to lend me a dress for the evening. First, I was invited backstage to have my hair and makeup done. Uh, she meals type. So, but ये है कि जरूरी था करना एक चीज तो करनी जरूरी थी ना अम्मा तो इस काम में एग्री नहीं थी क्योंकि अम्मा तो चाहती थी बट अम्मा को पता नहीं था ना क्योंकि मेरी जो अंदर की फीलिंग्स थी वो तो मेरी थी ना मम्मी एग्री नहीं थी भाई एग्री नहीं थे कोई भी एग्री नहीं था बट मुझे पता ना मैं एग्री थी फिर मैं इस काम में ज्वाइन किया वाज योर एनवायरनमेंट डिफिकल्ट टू डील विद इन कराची व्हेन यू वर गोइंग थ्रू दैट ट्रांजिशन बहुत कुछ मुश्किल होता है बट करना पड़ता है ना ये तो मेरी मेहनत है तो बस मैं लोगों की परवाह नहीं करती लोग जो भी बोलते रहे ये तो मेरी मेहनत है मैंने भी तो की मेहनत तो मैं समझती हूं कि हर कोई कर सकता है यू आर हियर आई आई हैव टू से आई वाज सरप्राइज्ड टू बी मीटिंग अ ट्रांसजेंडर हेयर स्टाइलिस्ट इन पाकिस्तान इट सीम्स दैट द फैशन वर्ल्ड हैज ऑलवेज ऑफर्ड अ सेंक्चुअरी फॉर पीपल शनड बाय वाइडर सोसाइटी हेयर एंड मेकअप डन ऑल दैट वाज लेफ्ट टू डू वाज पुट ऑन माय न्यू ड्रेस Moment of truth. I'm a little bit worried because it looks very see-through. I know this is crazy, but I actually did bring a bra on this trip <laughs> to get this over my Mormon hairdo. I'm so scared it's going to break. Oh. I can't go. Can you help me? Are we going on or off? <laughs> on, on, on. I didn't bring high heels because I didn't think people wore high heels here. This is my big debut into Karachi society. I wish me luck. Hi, how are you? I'm good. You look lovely. Thank you. I'm actually thinking I should get your heels because those aren't going. Oh, they're bad. So I, I want you to wear something. Okay. Cool. Do you have like gold heels? Okay. She doesn't have any. I think she's got really small feet though. I feel like the ugly duckling. <laughs> okay, good. Great. It looks pretty. Do you like me better like this? I don't know. The smartness doesn't come out as much in this outfit. Yeah. They dress me up. How do you think I look? Yeah, you look nice. It's a nice job. Um, yeah. <laughs> do I look like a local? 
Local? Why do you want to look like a local? Why? 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 Goodbye. This event had many of the familiar comforts of fashion weeks across the globe. However, this pocket of liberalism seemed to be at odds with the country's mainstream religious ideals. Fashion Week had shown me Pakistan's more progressive side, but this is a country that is also home to extremist factions. I traveled to the capital city and religious heart of Pakistan, Islamabad, 900 miles away from Karachi, to meet with a hardline Islamic cleric, Abdul Aziz Ghazi. But first, I had to find the right outfit. Assalamu alaikum. I'd like to buy a burqa. Uh huh. If you wear ma'am, this one. It's a little sparkly. Maybe one a little more classic. So this is the super cash. OK, I'll be right back. And do I wear pants underneath? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. OK, I'm going to try on my first burqa. <laughs> Very exciting. Thank you. What do you think? Yeah. Is it good? Oh, my god. What's happening to me? <laughs> Ah, but it's like coming up against my eyelashes. Cool. I feel like I'm in a disguise. Shukriya. <laughs> Thank you. Abdul Ghazi is the imam at the notorious Red Mosque, an ultra-conservative mosque with strong ties to Al-Qaeda and Osama bin Laden. Ironically, when the mosque was raided in 2007, Ghazi managed to escape, dressed in a burqa. I've just arrived at Abdul Aziz Ghazi's hiding place. I'm about to go in and meet him. Um, I'm dressed in what I hope is an appropriate outfit, and it's really hot, and I'm really nervous. Um, this is probably the most dangerous man I've ever met in my life. OK, can, we, can that just be it? I'm done. You shouldn't be nervous. OK, but you know, I've, I've never done this before. I'm not feeling great. Do I have to go first? His radical preaching has led him to be banned from setting foot in the mosque. He is still a wanted man by the Pakistani government, and so Ghazi is in hiding. In order to talk to him, we had to meet at a madrasa, or religious school, which he now helps to run. Ready? Okay. I was wondering what your rulings are on what is appropriate for a woman to wear. Shariat e mutahara ne be pardagi ke ko kaha ke nuksan de hai. Jaise aag hai, faide mand hai. Agar aap ko aap khula chhod denge aag ko, to aag tabahi mucha degi. Dekhi, Islam fashion ki ko ijaz deta hai. Ek shart to ye hai ke usme israf nahi hona chahiye. Ban samar ka mardon ke saamne aayegi, to tabahi to phailegi na. There's a secular part of society that are holding things like the Fashion Week. Um, how does their influence on Pakistan make you feel? And what are the vices that you would like to be removed from Pakistani society? سخت گیر لوگ پیدا ہوتے ہیں دیکھیں اب یہ خلافت الاسلام یا داعش والے جو پیدا ہوئے ہیں وہ اسی وجہ سے پیدا ہوئے What is a woman's role in society in your opinion? ویس نے یہ کیا کہ وہ بچے بھی سنبھالے گی اور وہ گھر کے کام بھی کرے گی وہ باہر جا کے ملازمت بھی کرے گی بیچاری سارا دن کام بھی کرتی ہے تو اسلام نے عورت کو ایک شہزادی بنا کر رکھا ہے اور ملکہ کا تصور دیا ہے شہزادی کا تصور پیش کرتا ہے اس کے ذمہ کام نہیں لگاتا ہوں I'm working right now. Do you find it strange to be interviewed by a woman? Our Sharia's law is that we do everything with the clothes. So there is no harm in the clothes. The woman can do all the work outside. We say that the Islamic system has come. The women come outside. They work in the hospitals. They work in the hospitals. And they should be in the whole government. But they should be separate from their parents. How do you think I look in this outfit? Very good looking, really. We also say that they will be good in the world, because we can't see them. But we want to come to Islam, so... Oh, he hasn't seen me. Okay. So they say that we want to show you some things in 5-10 minutes, 15 minutes, some things that we are making. Can you just hold it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you
Just want to show you guys something. Planet Earth. So he's taken clips of um, Planet Earth, the TV show, and narrated them himself. Uh, who is great? This is uh, birds. birds yeah. America and Japan and France he created. Allah Rabbul Izzat created. This is a made in Japan and China and America. No, this is made in Al Allah. This is really strange. It feels like I'm sitting around with my pals watching YouTube videos. <laughs> Next, Abdul Ghazi took us on a tour of the madrasa. So this is where you print all of your books. This is a Quran Majid, Urdu Tarjama ke The madrasa goes a step further than the state does by providing students with free food, housing, and medical care, making it an enticing draw for many of the poorest Pakistanis. Ghazi was being surprisingly hospitable to an American girl like myself. Though it soon became clear not everyone wanted us there. There's some kind of fight happening. Is that his wife? But is she upset that I'm a woman? No, she. It's like his wife is the boss. Yeah? In the most conservative and religious areas of Pakistan, women's clothing is often limited to one option, the burqa. In the West, some associate the burqa with female oppression, but an award-winning cartoon is trying to shift that perception. Why this project? Why now? I was reading about girls' schools being shut down by extremists um, in 2010, 2011. And like most Pakistanis, I was outraged. So I started imagining the school teacher standing up against these, these, these bad guys. And why the burqa? It's local and relatable. Secondly, I, I couldn't have her dressed as some of the Western superheroes like Catwoman. Or, or Wonder Woman because I thought that was objectifying women. And the other interesting thing is people would joke that when they'd see women in a burqa, they would say, oh, that's a ninja. That was always in my mind that, you know, that'd be a great disguise. And apart from that, growing up, I had thought that women in hijab and burqa, they were very oppressed. And I'd meet Pakistani women, I'd say, I'm so sorry, you know, did your father force you? And they were like, what are you talking about? This is my identity. My father actually hates me wearing this. This is who I am. So you're, in fact, reclaiming Absolutely. the burqa. The burqa is just a piece of cloth, man-made cloth. And that needs to be understood. Burqa! However, in Pakistan, this piece of black fabric is not just about modesty. It can be a matter of life or death. About 160 women a year become victims of acid attacks disfigured by their husbands or family members for alleged disobedience. These women will often then be shunned because of their scars. With their looks destroyed, they are no longer deemed useful to society, and many end up committing suicide. I was about to come face to face with a man who was admitted to committing one of these assaults. We're in a large public park in Islamabad. I'm about to meet with a man who attacked his wife with acid. I wanted to meet him in an open place where I felt safe, so that's why we're here. My stomach is definitely in knots. <laughs> I'm trying not to let myself feel angry at him. I really want to know how one gets to the point of doing something like that. I know that he's a taxi driver. I know that he is a free man. 
He was not charged because there was no evidence, as if the marrings on her face were not enough. I think he's ready for us. He's coming over. He's covering his face. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. How come you're covering your face? देखें ये आप जब इंटरव्यू आप ले रहे हैं मुंह तो छुपाना पड़ेगा अगर खुल खुला तो हम नहीं बता सकते जुर्म किया है शर्म तो आता है ना आई नो देर वॉज एन इंसिडेंट विद योर वाइफ इन विच यू फोर्ड एसिड ऑन हर आई वॉज वंडरिंग इफ यू कुक टू मी अबाउट हाउ दैट हैपन लेकिन वो कपड़े किस्म के पहन रही थी कि जैसे आप समझ लगे फैशन या वो बेहदा किस्म का जिससे इंसान का जिसम डांपा ना जाए नजर आ रहा हो लेकिन महल्ले वाले बलादरी वाले हर बंदा मुझे ना आगे वो बेजत कर रहा था कि तुम बगैरत हो चुकी हो तुम अपनी वाइफ को मना नहीं कर रहे हो फिर हम ताना नहीं सुन सकते ताना ऐसी चीज़ होती है कि आदमी या खुदकुशी कर ले अपने आप को मार ले या उसको मार दे यू आर जस्ट एम्बेस्ड जी जी यू केयर अलॉट अबाउट वट अदर पीपल थिंक ऑफ यू ये बहुत बुरी बात होती है आप चिड़ जाएंगी आपको गुस्सा आएगा आपको गुस्सा दिलाया जाता था कि ये आप काम करें ओके इसको सीधा करते 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 मैं हिम्मत हार चुका था इससे फिर मुझे एक दिन ऐसा किया कि इससे मैंने बहुत मारा फिर हम रजनामे के लिए गए हैं लेकिन उसके बावजूद से वो बाज नहीं आई या फिर उसके ना ऐसा ऐसा काम किया उसने अपने बाल कटा दिए हैं जब बाल मैंने कटाया ना फिर मैंने उसके ऊपर मैंने कहा अच्छा जी तूने ना किसी और के पास कुछ जाएगी तो ना इधर जिंदा रहे मैं तो ऊपर तेजाब फेंकता हूँ तो उसको पता चल गया भैया तेजाब फेंकेगा जब मैंने उसे फेंका तो उसने ऐसे किया ये जगह उसके जल है कपड़े जल और ये हाथ जला है उसका फिर उसको मैंने उसको तलाक दे दी मैंने कहा जाओ यू कुन जस्ट टॉक टू हर अबाउट इट दस साल पे आप जो ना वो कितना आप रोएंगे चीखेंगे चिल्लाएंगे कि ये बंदा ठीक हो जाए या आप ठीक हो जाए मैं ठीक हो जाऊँ आप कोशिश करेंगे ना आई वुडेंट हैव डन द सेम थिंग डिड यू थिंक योर वाइफ वाज ब्यूटीफुल जी माशा खूबसूरत थी वो नो इट्स रियली डिफिकल्ट टू एम्पथाइज विद समवन लाइक दैट हुज लॉजिक इज सो आउट ऑफ वैक द फैक्ट दैट ही चोज द वर्ड फैशन to be this charged and sort of brutal thing that happened to him blew my mind i now know that the fashion week is some kind of political act if people like him still exist in this society fashion means more than clothing here it's about defending a choice um or not having a choice I had been shocked to learn that the motive behind an acid attack could be as simple as what a woman is wearing it is a freedom that we take for granted but here it can lead to the destruction of a woman's life I had heard that there were people trying to change society to end these attacks and help the victims Run in conjunction with beauty parlors all over Pakistan, the Lahore-based Smile Again Foundation, set up 13 years ago by beautician Musrat Misba, helps acid attack victims rebuild their lives. So initially coming here my understanding that was m- most of these circumstances were perpetrated by the husbands. It's not just the husbands. There are other family members who are also involved in burning her. A woman is subjected to domestic violence because she is a commodity. She's a, a non-paid servant at all times and she doesn't have a say and if she gets the strength to say that no this is right or wrong um then she gets punished for that. That's the most difficult thing for me to understand because when I look at these women I think of them as victims and when people in their community look at them they think what have you done to mm. deserve something like this. So it's uh, the mindset of a society that needs to be changed. And when they throw acid it's always their face and their private parts also. Oh god, I didn't know that. Mm. and then she is not useful also so it's it's a punishment which is worse than killing to me it's like his intent is to disfigure her because for any young girl or woman her vanity is everything her face is everything there should be more severe and certain punishment i want you to meet josephine hi josephine hi oh, haley nice to meet you josephine is a very brave girl her relatives tried to burn her down and um but she survived although she lost her eye um she's going to a vocational training school to do stitching and embroidery she's got her work also aapke kya dil mein hai fir laal 
लाइफ होती मेरी अब तो खत्म हो चुकी है ना मैं अपने तरीके से जीती लोगों का सामना करती जो मैं अब नहीं कर पाती Another common cause of acid attacks are disputes over a bride's dowry. If the groom or his parents are unhappy with the amount of money offered by a bride's family, they will sometimes punish her with acid. Will you tell me your story? Meri shaadi walden ne ki thi aur thoda arsa wo log mere saath sahi rahe uske baad phir jab unhone Mrs. Zevrat le liye to uske baad aur do din maar peet ke मारा पीटा और उसके बाद उन्होंने मुझे बांध के मुझे तेजाब लगा दिए किस किसने किया था आपके ऊपर तेजाब पूरा बताइए मेरी मदर इन लॉ थी और साथ मेरा हस्बैंड था और फादर इन लॉ था फिर मुझे वो हॉस्पिटल घर को आग लगा दी मुझे बांध के घर को आग लगा दी और घर से चले गए उसके बाद फिर मुझे मोहल्लेदारों ने लोगों को दिखाने के लिए हॉस्पिटल लेके गए ख़त्म हो गया और फिर मैं इनके साथ मैं अपने आप को लेके चल रही हूँ मजबूती आई एम रियली वर्ड्स एक्टर दिस day it's been so inspiring to see these women overcome these insane atrocities today was a a day that I'll never forget ya brahma ya chut shankar a prabhati deva sada Karachi Fashion Week had been unlike any other fashion week I'd been to. The designers' collections told only half the story. The runway itself felt like a battleground for areas of religious and cultural conflict. What can I learn about Pakistani culture by coming to a fashion show like this? Pakistan is not just a country full of terrorists. There is women empowerment you see here. There is heritage and preservation of craft that you see here. So I think you're going to take back home a lot of goodie points. We have a lot of talent which I think is now coming into the spotlight with such events. Do you ever have to censor yourself on the runway? We do. Sometimes we do. We try to be careful to not show anything which is indecent. We need to respect. Yeah. yeah. our culture as well yeah what is religious clothing it's not religious clothing it's cultural is there a jewish dress is there a hindu dress is there a christian dress no fashion is fashion we know how to dress up we've been interacting with the west for the last 500 years so we know we think we should celebrate diversity and difference that's the beauty of this world In Pakistan, the simple act of getting dressed is not just personal. It's political too. In a culture where what you wear can have devastating consequences, style can be an act of bravery. 